The club was formed in 1945 and won their first trophy 20 years later, the 1965 Crown Prince Cup. The next 20 years were more, more fruitful with many trophies won and history written. In 1984 they became the first Saudi Arabian club to win an international title and in the same year the national team won the Asian Cup with three players from the club featuring prominently. They are still the only team in Saudi Premier League history to win it without losing a game in the season. The club lays emphasis on youth development and in 2002 they won the inaugural under 23 league. As Wilson and, and, and Agnostopoulos indicate, this can be summarised as a rich history, emotional connections and social relevance. Factors that are difficult to objectively measure, yet they have a bearing on the business performance of sporting teams. The club is government owned and funding comes from the General Sports Authority. Other, rev other revenue streams include broadcasting, ticket sales, merchandising, honourable members, sponsorships, donations and board member contributions, such as the President and Vice President's personal finances. Since 2007, the club has been selling players to financially strong competitors who are backed by wealthier or family members. Failure to correctly reinvest money gained from these transfers saw the club relegated for the first time in their history in 2013. In 2015, a new board led by engineer Khaled al Devil was elected, winning, promote, winning promotion on the last day of the same season. Since then, the club has maintained healthy league positions. Mr. al Devil's reign of four years is in its final season, and there is no confirmation of renewal or indeed change from the GSA chairman. In its correct form, the club is a sports club and not solely a football club. And as per sports ministry guidelines, it is to have a cultural and social impact through sport. The club has a variety of sports, ranging from volleyball and swimming to futsal and handball. The club is similar to the model of multi-sports clubs in Italy, but the difference is that in Saudi, the view of these clubs as football clubs takes over, especially if the club is in the top division and competing healthily. Overall, the club is attended by both competitive, amateur and professional athletes across a variety of sports. The main use of the club is by males. However, with countrywide reforms coming into place, such as women being allowed to drive since July 2018 and the establishment of a women's affairs division at the GSA, the club is beginning to create women and family friendly services such as youth stadium seating areas and dedicated female parking zones. Here we see an overview map of the club, highlighting the resources and infrastructure that is present. The club has four large youth pitches and one small one, in addition to a first team training stadium with, stand, with stands catering for males. More recently, a women's stand has been developed and other sports facilities besides those for football can be seen on a diagram. It's worth noting that there is no indoor football field. There is land available for development and in the past the club has contemplated building a further youth football field. This highlights the weight that the board gives to youth development and football as the main sport. As can be seen there exist dorms which can house staff and players along with catering facilities to provide the necessary services for those living on site. The club lies in an area named Sports City which borders Dammam and Khobar and is accessible by two highways that connect the two cities. Sports City overall hosts two other clubs, one of which uh, plays in the top division with Etifag and the other is in the lower division. In addition to this, there is the youth hostels for the Dammam and Khobar region. The maps below give a clearer image of the area. In terms of geopolitics, the country as a whole is rich in oil reserves, and that is the main dependency. The eastern province in general is where most of those reserves lie. Hence, there is a lot of oil wealthy individuals and businesses in the oil sector. A new, a new venture in a new city in the eastern region can potentially attract support from those wealthy individuals, especially in the wake of the increased importance of sport to politics in the country. This newfound emphasis on sport has pushed the scale of events being held in sporting cities around the country. Before such reforms, the eastern region had only held the futsal and volleyball finals. But since 2018, there has been an abundance of sports-related events. 
such as dirt bike events, equestrian events, esports events, board and card game events, and family fun day sports events, to name but a few. The sports events mentioned in the Eastern region are a mini replica of the major events that the country has hosted <coughs> since sports political reforms have engulfed. These events have given rise to a tourist e-visa, something unheard of since before the 1979 Grand Mosque seizure, after which Saudi Arabia stopped issuing tourist visas of any kind. Geopolitically, Khafji is very important to the oil industry on which the country depends on so much. There exists a neutral zone that is shared and disputed with Kuwait. However, according to media sources, as of this year, as of this year 2019, oil production between the two countries is set to resume. The forthcoming Saudi League season is set to follow the Premier League model by allowing teams from other countries to compete. A team from Bahrain and a team from Kuwait are set to enter the Saudi Pro League as the number of teams increases to 18. The Khafji border may see more teams using it to cross over and play should they opt against environmentally costly short flights. Football enthusiasts in Khafji will therefore become important to the Eastern region's clubs in addition to the Kuwaiti club that will enter the league. Currently there are three teams in the top division from the Eastern region and two others are likely to be promoted from the lower one. These aspects emphasize what Bloom Road tells us regarding football reaching a large population. Geoeconomically, the eastern region is healthy in relative terms to the economic crisis that has struck Saudi Arabia, Kuwait and other countries which depend heavily on oil sales. Data from Payscale shows good average salaries for Khafji, especially when compared with the Mamun Khobar where there is considerably higher costs of living. The reforms regarding women will also spur the country on economically. A simple example is by allowing women to drive and attend sports facilities, more are likely to take their kids to football academies and spectate. This gives rise to a big market opportunity to be exploited. The only club in Khafji no, no longer runs a football team, thereby reducing the entry barriers for another football club into the region. Here we see the club's strengths analysed. The main strength in terms of weight is the club's brand which according to Bloom Row is the most powerful part of brand, brand equity. Other main strengths are the social media following and the president who is liked, respected and well connected. Following this, the other two main strengths relate to youth development and the nurturing of talent. These are important to the club's future regardless of who is in charge. Youth players in the first team reduce the need for expensive transfers and high player wages. Overall, the club has a weighted score of 3.95. An above average score which indicates that they are responding well to internal environmental factors related to its strengths. The main weaknesses are a decreased youth department budget and an increasing first team budget, which hints at a strategy aimed at the now rather than the future. Another main weakness is the lower income from sponsors when compared to the top four clubs. However, the club in general is performing well on this factor when compared to the rest of the league's teams. Low support levels from youthful fans, those below age 30, is a worry as most of the club's fans are those who grew up on the success of the 60s and the 80s. With a total weighted score of 2.79, the club is performing below average with respect to the way it responds to its weaknesses. Many opportunities exist for the club, notably the way it can use the large social media following to engage its fans more. The need to bring in more youthful fans can be achieved by capitalising on opportunities such as academies in and around the region, partnerships with schools and new social media channels in English in order to tap into the large expat fan base that exists. An overall weighted score of 2.00 is well below average and this shows that the club should be responding a lot better to external factors related to the opportunities within its environment. The threats which surround the club are many, however the main ones seem to be the uncertainty over whether the current board will continue or not. This has the potential to cause major instability. Other threats are in the form of a low league finish or worse yet relegation and the loss of key staff members. As more and Levermore indicate there is an ongoing challenge to hire and retain top talent and in the last few seasons the club has lost both its secretary and its technical director to the Saudi Football Federation. Other staff members are also headhunted by other organisations. A total weighted score of 2.43 is below average 
and shows that the club could be responding better to the threats that surround it. In analysing and summarising the strategic factors that surround the club, both internally and externally, we can see how well they are performing overall. We can also see which of the aspects identified in the previous slides need to take priority in the short term, which are targeted at the intermediate term and which are those for the long term. The club's strengths represent good weighted scores and if they can capitalise on this correctly, they can maintain long-term success off the field. Reinvesting in youth while maintaining a balance to the first team will negate any possible relegation issues, while increasing the fan base and their engagement will help the club bring in more revenue. An overall SFAS score of 2.89 is below the average of 3, and therefore the club should be doing something to improve. As research shows, if strengths, weaknesses, opportunities and, threat and threats are correctly aligned, superior performance can be achieved by ensuring resources are spent in the right places. In creating a map of future events based on the analysis, the following suggestions are things that the club can be doing. English social media cha channels to engage the expat fans, opening football ac academies and centres in and around the region, opening futsal academy at the club's base, working with teachers at schools as initiatives to bring in younger fans to games, developing partnership with compounds to increase the number of families attending games. These suggestions should be concentrated on the, re on the region because the club holds strong recognition within it and trying to, com keep, try and trying to compete nationally with the big four is not a possibility until they can win a major trophy again. Khafji is a niche market because the marketplace for football academies is unsatisfied. A football academy in the area will be the first in the city run by a professional team in the top division. It will allow for engagement of youth players. It will be a talent hub for the clubs where any outstanding players can be relocated to the club's surroundings. It will increase the number of fans who associate with the club. It will offer opportunities for the expat community, especially if multilingual coaches are hired. And it will definitely offer job opportunities for new qualified coaches. According to Wilson and Agnostopoulou, the main objectives under which professional sports teams operate are off-the-field business commercial operations and on-the-field performance. A football academy will affect the former, but not the latter immediately. Porter and Van Plu indicate towards how the output of a strong brand in a new market with a new product can improve the consumer experience and raise interest in the product that is the club. An academy base in a new city such as Khafji is an example of this. The opportunity to make profits regardless of first team performance is present in such an academy model while the possibility of enabling the formation of supporter groups in the city can quickly become a reality. These are examples of creative processes that propel change as referred, as referred to by Wadhan and Lubinsky and evidence of such measures is available practically at the club. In 2016-17 season, the club established a development centre 50 kilometres away from the club's main grounds and in doing so became the first professional Saudi team to have a development centre. It was established after a 20,000 Saudi real investment and managed by a head youth coach and three foreign coaches because at the time a number of qualified and experienced Saudi local coaches who were available was very limited. At the end of the season, a net profit of 40,000 Saudi Riyal was achieved in addition to an increase in the number of youth players signed at the club, the increased quality of the youth teams competing and a reduction in the loss of late developing talent to rival clubs in the region. Overall, the strategy suggested is based on sound analysis of the club situation. It has considered strengths, weaknesses, opportunities and threats, and threats in a calculated way while offering a neutral view because with a SWOT analysis it is easy to be biased. Having conducted a few interview meetings with the club's board members, paid visits to the club's first team and youth departments, I was able to give an unbiased analysis of what things could be done. By comparing the club to a study on Italian multi-sports clubs, to clubs in the UK which have development centres and academy bases around the country and to clubs which have international soccer schools, I was able to compile the main reasons for such initiatives. With the board coming to an end, such a strategy will not strain them financially and will allow them to leave a legacy beyond the end of their leadership term. By entering a key marketplace, a niche that is Khafji, they can say they can have first mover advantage over the rest of the region and over the potential team from Kuwait that is set to join the Saudi Pro League next season. I hope to refine this presentation into a business report and offer it to the club's hierarchy for implementation and action based on the findings.